by an American satellite high overhead. Infrared sensors detected this sudden flash of heat, and that could speak volumes about what happened to that Russian Airbus. There's that, and there is also the fact that the airline owes employees two months' pay. And there's much more, including an ISIS affiliate claiming responsibility. A whole lot to cover here. First, CNN aviation correspondent Renee Marsh joins us with the breaking news. Renee, tell us about this satellite and just what it picked up. Well, John, CNN has learned a flash was detected by a U.S. satellite over Sinai around the time that Metrojet aircraft crashed. This from CNN's Barbara Starr, who's confirmed this with Pentagon sources. Right now, both the military and U.S. intelligence community are reviewing this new information to determine what it means. Was this flash part of the plane breaking up or was it something else? They're trying to also determine whether that flash happened on the ground or mid-air. All things, John, they don't know just yet. About 23 minutes after takeoff, a Russian passenger jet suddenly disappeared from radar. The plane was cruising above 30,000 feet when, according to the website Flight Radar 24, it experienced sharp changes in altitude in a matter of seconds. There were no distress calls from the cockpit, no sign of bad weather in the area, no indication anything was wrong. But the Airbus A321, with 224 souls on board, shattered in the air. Air, according to investigators, breaking into pieces before crashing to the ground. No one on board survived. What caused this aircraft to suddenly crash to the ground? One of the first questions, was this a terrorist attack? Islamic militants have been battling Egyptian forces in the Sinai Peninsula for years. And Russian planes have been the target of militant attacks in the past because of that country's long-running conflict with Islamists in Chechnya. And what about ISIS? The group did claim responsibility for the attack on Twitter, but American intelligence officials say so far they see no sign of terrorism, though it's not being ruled out either. We don't have any uh, direct evidence of any... Um terrorist involvement yet. The Egyptian military says militants in the area of the crash don't have the type of weaponry that could bring down a plane above 30,000 feet. So was it a technical problem? The ex-wife of the plane's co-pilot told Russian state-run media he complained about the condition of the plane before the flight. But the airline said they have no records of complaints from the pilot or the crew. And the Airbus passed its routine inspection before takeoff, according to Egyptian authorities. Investigators have recovered the black boxes from the wreckage, which is strewn over eight square miles. They have also recovered the bodies of the victims. According to investigators, most passengers were found with their seatbelts on, which could mean the pilot told passengers to fasten their seatbelts, knowing they were in trouble. In St. Petersburg, mourners gathered to remember the victims, releasing balloons into the air, remembering the 224 lives lost, 25 of those children. The youngest victim, this 10-month-old baby girl. Her mother posted this picture from the St. Petersburg airport before the first leg of their journey to Egypt. It's a sad image to see right there. Renee. What are you hearing tonight about the possibility of the NTSB joining this investigation? Well, John, the NTSB could part participate. We know that the engines on this aircraft, they are U.S. manufactured engines. And because of that, the NTSB is entitled to participate if they wish to. Now, a source tells me uh, that the NTSB has uh, made contact with the Egyptian officials. They've expressed to them uh, that they are ready to participate. However, at this point, the NTSB is playing a wait and see role to see exactly the direction of this investigation before they make a decision as to whether they will dispatch a team there. All right, Renee Marsh for us in Washington. Thanks so much. Much more on this heat flash in just a moment. But first, in Russia, authorities have raided airline offices searching for evidence. And as we mentioned, reports have surfaced about finances at that carrier. Matthew Chance is in St. Petersburg right now and joins us. Matthew, what are Russian officials saying about the two months' wages owed to these airline employees? 
Yeah, this, this airline, Metrojet, appears to have had some financial difficulties. The country's Labour Ministry here says that two months' uh, wages were owed to staff members of the, uh, of the airline, Metrojet. Uh, they're also investigating some other aspects, whether the maintenance was up to scratch, whether the psychological counselling and testing of staff members and pilots was up to scratch as well. But the, there's no suggestion at this point that, uh, that financial problems could have led to you know, shortcuts and maintenance or anything like that. And, and remember that, you know, all Russian airlines at the moment, because of the, the economic situation in the country, are suffering um, big, some economic strain. And so it's not necessarily a factor, but it's one of the uh, considerations that the investigators are looking at as they try to piece together what happened to this, uh, this uh, flight. But the emphasis is still very much at the moment, uh, at this point in Russia, on identifying the bodies. They've been flown back, or 144 of them, so far have been flown back from Egypt here to St. Petersburg. There's another plane due back in the next few hours, bringing more human remains back to this country so they can be formally identified and funeral arrangements can be made. Hey Matthew, it looks like you're standing right in front of a memorial at the airport in St. Petersburg where this plane was due to land. What's the mood there today? Yeah, it's, it's very sad. And uh, you're right, this is uh, the memorial that's been uh, springing up over the past three days and, and even now there are people here uh, laying flowers, uh, uh, lighting candles and, and, and these children's toys uh, uh, to remember the fact that 25 of the people on board the plane uh, were just children and so it's a, a deeply sad event. Uh, Russia has had more than its fair share, I think it's fair to say, of airline disasters. It's affected by terrorism. There have been uh, maintenance and technical problems that have led to casualties and deaths uh, as well. But this has particularly touched people in this country, perhaps because it was a tourist flight. These people had gone to Sinai for some winter sun uh, at the start of what is going to be a very long winter uh, here in Russia. There were families, uh, there were couples on board, there were children, and it's really struck a chord in this country. And so, yes, they want to get, this, uh, get some closure on this, but they also want answers. Was it terrorism or was it technical failure and the investigators have to answer that John 25 children on board Matthew Chance in St. Petersburg thank you so much let's bring in our aviation expert CNN safety analyst David Susie he's a former FAA accident investigator also pilot and CNN aviation analyst Miles O'Brien and David let's start with the breaking news tonight this infrared activity the heat flash detected by a US satellite over the Sinai Peninsula at the time of the incident what does this mean to you it means a lot of things, John, and what, uh, what's most important is, did that flash start on the ground or did it flash happen in the air? Very conclusive. If it happened on the ground, it could indicate that there was some sort of missile launched. If it happened in the air, then that means that there may have been something on the aircraft as far as incendiary devices goes. But uh, it's too early, obviously, to conclude anything, but those are extremely important points. So we look forward to hearing what the, what the results are of that. Miles, if it was in the air, does that in and of itself uh, indicate that it was an incendiary device? Or could you get a heat flash from, you know, an engine somehow malfunctioning and exploding on its own? Yes, that could happen. I think the number of flashes is the key here. If there was a missile launch, you'd get an, an infrared signature for that, the launch itself, and you'd get a second flash, a second infrared signature for the impact itself, possibly even a third when the uh, structure struck the, the floor of the desert as, as uh, further fuel might have exploded. So the number of heat signatures is crucial. If, in fact, only one was detected, uh, that, in some respects, might steer one away from a missile launch and onto some idea of an, an, an explosion on board the aircraft. There's been so much focus uh, on a missile, but but there are other ways, you know, as we've learned over you know over the decades, to take down a plane with an explosive device. I mean, there's a bomb that could be in a suitcase or something in the fuselage miles. So so is the focus somehow too much on the possibility of a missile when it could be something in the air? Well, when you think about what it takes to bring down an airliner at 33,000 feet, it's a surface-to-air missile uh, battery, which uh, is guided by two radar systems and a lot of sophistication of technology and people to operate it. It's unclear whether ISIL has that level of sophistication. You know, a surface, 
you know, a shoulder mounted surface to air missile is one thing that that's a degree of simplicity. But this airplane was flying too high to be mm. struck by such a, a, a surface to air missile, a man pad, as it were. So I, you know, when I'm it, it, certainly bringing down an airliner if you're a terrorist, uh, it, it's it's a little simpler in many respects, requires a lot less technology if if that device is on the aircraft. David, what do we know about security in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt? where this plane, this flight originated from. Do they have, you know, in-depth security procedures there? Uh, they do. I spoke with Jalal Haider, who used to be with the International Civil Aviation Organization, just moments ago, and he told me that he was there when they started that security system there, that they do have screening. They have screening that actually tests for the barometric triggered devices on every bag. As the bag goes through, they barometrically change the pressure on those bags before they're loaded onto the aircraft to test to see if once it's at altitude, it may trigger a bomb. So if there was that type of device on board the aircraft, it would have have to, had to come into the aircraft in some other way because the security for baggage is very good at that airport. Hey, Miles, what do you make of the news that we're getting out of Russia right now? The employees at this airline are owed two months pay. I mean, we're hearing from Russia, obviously, there's a lot of problems at a lot of companies right now. They're not being paid. But does that raise red flags about how stringent the employees may have been in screening? Absolutely. Um, not only might they be just plain old lax because uh, they don't have, they have not been incentivized by a paycheck, but it's quite possible there's some, a lot of disgruntled people who are working for that airplane, airline, I should say. So uh, the security is only good as the people who staff the airline and who has more access to an airplane on the ground than the employees of the airline. And if they're not being paid. Uh, that open, opens up a whole distinct avenue of investigation, which is unusual, to say the least. David, one of the things we heard is that back in 2001, this plane's tail struck the runway when it was landing at one point. The tail was damaged, but then it was repaired. Nevertheless, could, could a strike like that years ago somehow contribute to a malfunction you know, a decade and a half later? Uh, it, it absolutely could, and here's how. People say, well, it was repaired according to the structural repair manual, and that is true. There's no doubt in my mind that it was. What happens in that type of repair when it's that extensive, and it, I'm, I have to be honest, I don't know how extensive it was, but if it was to the point where it was documented as a structural repair, that means the structural repair manual was used. So in that case, you're talking about metal on metal being repaired. Now, when that metal on metal occurs, it has to have the right type of insulation or sealant to make sure that the sealant and the, and the metal doesn't erode itself, or you end up with a situation like in Aloha Airlines accident where it, it erodes over age mm. and then eventually cracks and breaks. So there, uh, that is an area of concern. There's no reason to think that that is the case at this point, but it sure definitely could be. All right, just one of the things they're looking at. Again, the focus tonight on these heat flashes, the infrared detections from a U.S. satellite. I am sure there will be a lot of questions over the next few hours there. David Susie, Miles O'Brien, thank you so much. Next, a closer look at what the black boxes can tell and more on what to make of the airplane's sudden change in airspeed and altitude. Richard Quest joins us. He has some thoughts on why we could get some answers sooner rather than later. Plus, we have more breaking news. New presidential polling just out that could turn the race between the two leading Republican candidates upside down. New numbers that one of the candidates is going to like a lot and the other is Donald Trump. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Cialis. When a moment turns romantic, why pause to take a pill? Or stop to find a bathroom? Cialis for daily use is approved to treat both erectile dysfunction and the urinary symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently, day or night. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use and a free 30 tablet trial. If you have high blood pressure like I do, many cold medicines may raise your blood pressure. That's why there's Corsetin HBP. It relieves cold symptoms without raising blood pressure. So look for powerful cold medicine with the heart. 
core seat in HBP. Its effects on society really came about because, not because I was selfish and wanted one for myself, which I did. It's because I had had a passion my whole life. I wanted to teach myself to build computers. I wanted to build these things for free. I just wanted to do it for the world. And you know, when you want something, that's what you do the best. When I went on to Ancestry, I just put in the name of my parents and my grandparents. And as soon as I did that, literally, it was like you're getting seven, nine, ten, fifteen leaves that are just popping up all yeah, over the place. Yeah, it was amazing. Just with